Hello, hello, everyone. This is Yana Smakula for SimonSaysTM.com. Welcome back for another Yippee for Yana video. In this episode, I will show you how to create hot foil backgrounds with the help of your non-background glimmer plates. Think of this as repeat pattern stamping, but instead of using clear or a red rubber stamp, we're going to use a hot foil plate. I have a few tips to share in this video to make the foiling process go smoothly and quickly. I love this Mermaids Forever glimmer plate by Jane Davenport, and I know it will make a fabulous background for some nautical cards when paired with Simon's Your Light stamp set. Here's a card I already made using these supplies, and you can see how gorgeous of a sea background this plate makes. The plate, of course, is smaller than an A2 card. It can be used on both portrait and landscape cards, but you will need to foil it several times on the background to have one continuous pattern. This is rather easy to do with the help of low tack tape. Let me show you how. I have a piece of white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. This is Nina Solar White, 110 pounds. I've adhered a piece of wide low tack tape to create a hinge to attach my glimmer plate to the paper. I'm using washi tape from my stash, but any low tack tape will work, like the purple tape from Thermoweb or micropore tape from 3M. Just use what you have. I'm using the grid lines of my paper to align the cardstock and also align the die on top of it. Also, I'm starting at the top and moving down, making sure the tape, the washi tape, will not be placed over the already foiled section. Once aligned, I press the washi tape strip in place to secure my plate on the paper. This will give me a top row of these mermaid scales or waves. I'm using Sky Bright foil to foil this piece and to foil the entire background. It makes up for a beautiful sea. Using a sharp pair of scissors, I cut my foil to a strip. I eyeball it and try to match it in width to the width of my glimmer plate. And once cut, I simply slide it under the plate. The only significant thing here is to try and cut the foil on a straight line. Using scissors with long blades sure helps. Meanwhile, my glimmer hot foil machine has been heating up and is now hot and ready to foil. You can tell it is ready because the top, the two top lights, the red light and the green lights are on. To begin the heating process, I've pressed the timer button and this starts to heat up the glimmer plate that I have just placed on the machine. This will take about one minute to properly heat up the plate. The next step is to build the sandwich and get it ready to go through your die cutting machine to apply the pressure and transfer the foil to the paper. For this, you have two shims or plates that come with the Glimmer hot foil machine. You can see my plates have been well used and loved. I have a lot of foil transfer here. I once even foiled on one of the plates instead of the paper by accident. I also have a sheet of green cardstock. I like to use it as a shim to increase the pressure when foiling. This is something you'll need to experiment with as you might not need to add the shim in your machine. I've brought my die cutting machine. This is Deep Sea Die Cutting Machine by Jane Downport for Spellbinders and I am ready to foil. The last light has stopped flashing and that means that my glimmer plate is now hot enough and ready to transfer the foil onto the paper. I am however going to heat it up one more time as I have found I get better results with solid glimmer plates such as this one when they are heated up for a little bit longer. For this, I've pulled the platform out of the docking station just far enough to disconnect it, then plugged it back in, waited for the second light to turn solid green and pressed that timer button again. You don't have to do this for every plate or every time you foil, but if you do find you have some glimmer plates that do not give you good solid foiled results, no matter what paper you use or how many shims you use, 
You can try and heat it up twice. This should help. But also be careful with overheating your plates, as this can result in overfoiling. And you will see me have some overfoiling later as I continue to foil my backgrounds. Time to foil. I'm sending my sandwich slowly through my docketing machine and also back and returning the platform back to the docking station so that it remains hot for the next round. Now I need to remove the glimmer plate, peel the foil, reposition the plate and add the foil all while that glimmer plate is hot. So what do you do? You can wait for the plate to cool off and that might take several minutes or you can use this trick. Wear a glove. I have one of those curling irons that doesn't have a clamp and so there is a glove included with the iron to be able to wrap the hair strand around the curling wand and hold it in place while it curls it. The glove protects the hand from the heat. I can use it when doing hot foiling to handle the hot glimmer plate and also protect my hand from all of that heat. I'm a lefty, so putting it on my left hand and I am ready to roll. Let's peel the foil first and look at this beauty. So pretty. I love this result. Holding the paper with my non-gloved hand, I'm going to remove the glimmer plate with my gloved hand and reposition it on the paper, aligning with the previously foiled design to have one continuous background on my card. Having the glove on makes it very easy to move the glimmer plate and position it where I need it. The glove is needed just for the first couple of seconds when the plate is very hot. The plate cools off pretty quickly. I'm going to repeat the process, cut the foil, add it under the plate, place the plate on the glimmer machine, wait for the timer to heat up the plate, pull the platform out of the docking station, and reinsert it to heat it up again. While the plate is heating up, I wanted to chat a bit about cleaning your plates. Once I'm done foiling this, I'm going to use my undo to clean up the plates from the access foiling. Any sticker remover will be good for the job. One tip I will give you, do not use any sharp objects to scrape the foil off as that might scratch the plates and therefore that will leave scratch marks on your foiled projects. Here's, by the way, another one of my fails. I placed the foil wrong side down and instead of foiling the paper, I foiled my glimmer plate. Now these things happen and I wanted to show you not only the hits, but also the misses in this video so that you don't feel discouraged should you make a mistake. We all make them. The plate is hot, time to run it through the machine and foil. Nothing beats peeling the foil away and revealing that gorgeous foiled result. But first, let's put the glove on so that we can handle the heat. Isn't this pretty? To foil the entire card front using this glimmer plate, you'll need to foil it five times. I foiled mine four times as I knew I would be trimming the background down slightly, so I didn't need to foil that fifth time to complete the background. If you do want to foil the entire card front, I would recommend starting with a larger piece of paper. It's just easier this way to position the glimmer plate. And then you can cut it down to the proper size once you're done foiling. While the plate is heating up for the last time to foil the background, I went ahead and picked up a few other colors of foil to create another background, but an ombre foiled background this time. Luckily, there are lots of foil colors out there these days. Just remember that mink foils will not work for this. That's a different technology. Here I have Spellbinders foils in cobalt blue, teal, sky bright, and prism. Meanwhile, I finished foiling the first background using the sky bright foil alone. I love the result and I just cannot wait to put it on a card. While I foil, I love to multitask. This means that while my machine is heating up and I'm foiling one piece, I like to prep for another card or just play and experiment with my supplies. Here I have Seahorse's Glimmer Plates, also by Jane Davenport, and I want to try and use those to make a foiled background. So not just foil these images once, but foil them repeatedly 
as I did with the mermaid scales plate to have a full background. And that's easy to do. Again, if you use the washi tape trick to hold your plates in place on the paper. You will see me work on both backgrounds at the same time to save time as I'm repositioning the plates, cutting the foil down, and of course, foiling the other background. Now this one overfoiled a little bit. It's not a big deal. It overfoiled because I overheated the plate. It is easily fixable. I use a dry brush with stiff bristles to remove the excess foil. This happens often, so do not be alarmed. The first round of seahorses is done and I really like how pretty they look. To continue the pattern, I'm repositioning them on the background again using washi tape and I simply continue to foil while also foiling the ombre background using the mermaid scales glimmer plate. Then, to fill in the gaps on the seahorse background, I use individual plates and just place them where I see big gaps in the background, again using the washi tape trick. Now, this row of mermaid scales did not foil well. It missed a few spots. I can certainly leave it as is, but because I still have the glimmer plate secured on the paper with washi tape, I can now use a new piece of foil and double foil this to have a perfect row. Think of this as double stamping using Misty or another stamping tool. Here, the washi tape strips allows you to flip the die back into its original position to try and fix foiling mistakes. And it did fix the problem. You can see how solid of a foiled coverage I was able to get when doing the second round of foiling. I just need to add that last strip to finish this background and I'm ready to use it on a card. While I did finish my seahorse's background, I didn't actually use it for a card today, perhaps in the future. I still wanted to show you how you can use your individual glimmer plates to create beautiful backgrounds for your cards. Here's that ombre background finished, looks beautiful and simply perfect for the card that I have in mind. I trimmed my background down slightly, and to create little nautical scenes, I also die cut circles from vellum and cardstock strips from red cardstock. I white heat embossed images and sentiments, and using foam adhesive, I assembled these cards. I also hid little pieces of foam adhesive squares under small sequin or enamel dot embellishments to add more support and more adhesive to the vellum circles. Here's a look at these cards once finished. I hope you will give this approach a try. If you do make a card inspired by this video, we'd love it if you shared your project online and tagged us on social media. We always enjoy seeing what you make. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye!